Hello, Fritz. Hello, Fritz. Hello. <laughs> Glad to uh, be uh, with you again. And I have to uh, tell you that I'm really grateful for the library administrator. She's allowed me to come here to the library and use her laptop to be able to conduct this interview. Because where I'm staying out in the country, I don't have internet service. So uh, thanks to someone who is very generous, I'm able to do this interview with you. Yeah, you live in Kansas now. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, and uh, you are going to talk about your research, that you are going to continue your research with the Illuminati, the bloodlines, or... Oh, thank you. Yeah, I would enjoy doing that. Uh, I get asked the question, Alexandra, by people, well, where do you start to research the Illuminati? And so that question will be answered in, in some ways today. Also, uh, we'll pad out or give some more information on some of the, some of the things and people that you know. And so I was going to start with William Cornelius Van Dyne and talk a little bit about that, which was going to allow me to talk about his right hand man who comes from an important Illuminati family. And then from there, I was going to talk about how the uh, Illuminati like to set themselves up and they like to fancy themselves as being the defenders of freedom and liberty. So the, the Jacobin called themselves the Society of the Friends of the Constitution. You know, we are defenders of, of what is noble. And how they, how they, <clears throat> this is what I'll be talking about today. Uh, my plans were to talk about things that I haven't written about. And so those people who have read my books will be receiving new stuff. Yeah, there he is. <laughs> picture of William yeah, good picture of him. That's one <laughs> yeah. of his better pictures. Yeah, is it? Uh, have you got this picture from? Uh, no. William Van Down. No, that's one of his better pictures. Uh, I bet he liked. I was going to discuss some about their their, their revolution start out in terms of Europe and then seg into uh, the political dynasty of the Nehru Gandhi political dynasty in India, which is an elite family, and show how the Illuminati was involved with all of that. Because as strange as it seems, uh, or, or for those of us that are in the, in the uh, know, you know, those of us who are aware of things, awake, as they say, uh, we realize that we, we don't have all these so-called democracies where people are electing who they want, but uh, our candidates are selected and the elections are rigged. And so here we have this political dynasty of the Nehru Gandhi uh, family. For 40 years, they control India. And people in the press say, See, that's proof that uh, India is a democracy. <laughs> it's proof, huh? That you got this. That you got this family that's similar to uh, uh, the British monarchy and and has the glamour of the Kennedy clan over here in the United States, and that's proof of democracy. You know, <laughs> it, it's amazing what the press will they'll take. Uh, it, it, to use an, an American expression, you know, uh, take a sow's ear and turn it into silk. <laughs> so anyway, that's, that's uh, the direction I wanted to go today. Yeah, that's great. So I'm very curious what you are going to, to tell us today. <laughs> yeah, uh, you, you can kind of uh, see to some degree why I haven't talked, uh, I will explain why I haven't written or talked about some of these things before, but um, when I was going back and forth with 
uh, William Van Dyne, or you pronounce it differently. And that's, that's another thing that we're going to have here is some of these names are pronounced differently and I may not pronounce them correctly or I may not pronounce them like you would or they would. You know, in Belgium, I, I was going to start out talking about Belgium because that's where the Van Dyne family is uh, headquartered or centered. And, uh, you know, I'm sure that they pronounce it differently over there. You've got half of the country speaking in French the other half speaking Dutch, and then even that between the French and the Dutch, I'm sure they have different pronunciations for these. But uh, his right-hand man is David D. Marodi. And <clears throat> so I was going to talk about the D. Marodi family today um, because, we, because when I was talking with these people, uh, there was like a detente, you know what I mean by a detente. Um, for those that are listening that may not be aware, uh, just a second, this computer is trying to load uh, software, which is not what we want to do right now. Okay, thank you. I had to <laughs> stop it from interrupting what we were doing to load software. Unbelievable. These computers have a mind of their own. But anyway, <clears throat> uh, let's see. So I was talking about the Van Dyne family, I believe, or was I? Was I, right. I, lost, I lost my train of thought there. Yeah, because his, of the, yeah. You were talking about his right hand. Yeah. Um, well, going back to the Van Dyne family, one thing that I had learned back in 1991 is the Van Dyne of all of these elite families was more secretive but they were also, in terms of their own people, more upfront. So if you, were, if you were a member of the Van Dyne family and you were being initiated into the Illuminati, they wanted you to totally volunteer to join. They wanted your allegiance. In contrast with some of these other bloodlines, they had their members under mind control so that when they were initiated, it wasn't really a full voluntary thing because they were being coerced into joining. You know, you were born into this family, so you're not going to leave the family. You're going to honor the family, and you're going to join, whether you like it or not. But the Van Dynes were more, they wanted their people to sincerely be uh, involved. And so there is this sort of a, a flavor, you might say, to the Van Dynes, where they're a little bit more nicer in a way. I, I, I don't know. I haven't thought of the right way to describe it, but they're, uh, there's a certain uh, pleasant aspect of, to them. And so David D. Marodi, who's, who's William's right-hand man, he's totally He's totally loyal to his uh, master. He, he's, uh, you know, and because I was, I was in this detente situation where they were respecting me, I was respecting them. I haven't tried to expose the De Marodi family. Well, who are the De Marodis? Well, first, I should explain De Marodi is the French, name, uh, French way of the name. But if you go to Belgium, it's von Marodi. If you go to Germany, it's von Marodi. So it, it, it changes slightly as you go across international, uh, the old international boundaries before the EU. But uh, there's five princely aristo uh, aristo aristocratic um, Belgium families, get that to come out correctly, and, and one of them's D. Marodi. And they, <clears throat> they all go back genealogically, back to uh, this brother of the king of Aragon. You know, Aragon was a kingdom that became part of the kingdom of Spain later. And so it all goes back to this Charles guy who was a brother of the king 
with Aragon. They're all descendants of him. And they, the family was very prominent in the Belgium Revolution in setting up the country of Belgium. And so when people ask me what, uh, what, where, where they should go to s start researching the Illuminati, they really should go to like the, the Dutro affair, which I'm going to talk about in a minute. They should go to Belgium, Belgian politics, because here we have a little nation created out of nothing. And I mean, everybody got, Belgium got everybody's sympathy in World War I and World War II because poor neutral Belgium got in, uh, invaded by the nasty Germans and um, had their neutrality vi violated. And then a lo the British managed to make a lot of propaganda stories about Belgium women being raped and eaten and who knows what else to win the world's uh, sympathy to go to war with the British. Um, but Belgium was given the crown jewels of Africa, so to speak. They were given the Congo, which is so rich in diamonds and all these other precious Africa was given to little Belgium and nobody protested. I mean, this is the, the, uh, the uh, aristocracy of Belgium and the royalty of Belgium got filthy rich, you know, because they were given the, the crown jewels of, of Africa. And you have to wonder why, why did all this happen? You know, well, it happened because it was something that the Illuminati wanted to happen. So this family I'm talking about, Di Marodi, they have over seven castles in Belgium, uh, the uh, Westerloo Castle, the Chateau de Sarant, and these castles, some of these castles were involved with, and, and you're, you're probably familiar with the Dutro affair in the late 90s, this scandal that broke and by the way, interrupting my train of thought, but there was a guy named Marcel, and be, because of, he exposed uh, the, the Dutro satanic pedophilia ring that involved the Belgian government and royalty and everything, for his troubles, they put him in, in jail, in prison. So actually, you and I have come out pretty easy compared to some of the people that were involved in exposing the Dutro affair because about 110 of them got assassinated. And so we've got, you and I have gotten off kind of easy. <laughs> oh, <God>. You know, so <laughs> far. <laughs> yeah, you, you, but you said uh, in prison eight years. Yeah, yeah, but, you know, there were some benefits to that. Uh, so this, this Marcel Verlaisen, I'm not pronouncing it correctly, I'm sure. Um, but anyway, he, he, was, he was an activist that, like yourself that was exposing things, and, and they don't like that. So. But there were two, two people, and I wasn't the one who initially exposed them. Other people over there in Belgium exposed them, but there were two De Marodis connected to the Dutro affair. And Prince Alexander... <coughs> And that guy was pretty nasty. He was identified by witnesses as, you know, doing black masses, uh, eating human body parts, drinking blood, you know, the whole, uh, whole, and pedophilia. He, he is a nasty character. And then there was Prince Simon de Marodi. So there were a couple of the de Marodis that were identified in the scandal. And as you know, Dutro, Mark Dutro, took the fall for this whole thing, and they had to they had to, to keep a, a cap on, on the whole thing getting out of hand. They had to kill about 110 of the witnesses of all of this satanic pedophilia. So anyway, I had, I had exposed that before uh, I found out David DiMarodi's name, you know, and, and was visiting with him. So I was, you know, I'm, I'm kind of uh, grateful that they were 
they they didn't have more hostile feelings <laughs> towards me. <laughs> um, but the De Marodi family, just to give you an idea of of how prominent they've been. So the mayor of Brussels <clears throat> was a De Marodi in 1805. You had uh, Pope Pius the Ninth. His right hand person was a De Marodi. By the way, speaking of the Dutro scandal, a lot of those guys that were connected to the Dutro satanic pedophilia ring were connected to Opus Dei, which is a Catholic thing. And the Van Dyne family, you know, he went to a, a Catholic university. So this whole thing connects in with the Catholic Church, too, you know. I mean, it's all mixed in together. Um, and then Alexander de Marodi has been the vice president of the International Olympic Committee. So there, these people are in positions. The de Marodi family has played a very active role in Belgian politics. And uh, so the Belgium royalty was connected to this whole scandal. Of course, it's illegal in, in Belgium to do any criminal uh, charges against the royal family. So uh, this computer is going to give me, is going to keep interrupting me wanting to load software. Um, <laughs> did you see that? Did you see that come up on the screen? Oh, well, that's good. <laughs> uh, so, Fritz? aristocrat family, pardon me? I couldn't hear you for a while, so if you can, you can start again, uh, oh. the last. Okay, so uh, I was talking about Opus Dei and how the Catholic Church uh, William Van Dyne went to a Catholic university. So the Catholic Church and, and the, you know, these Illuminati people in Brussels, Brussels is like headquarters. So if somebody's wanting to investigate the Illuminati, go and look what a big role Brussels has played. And later when I get to the Nehru family, you know, so, uh, the, the the head of the the patriarch of uh, Nehru family, he was brought in 1927 to to the League Against Imperialism, which was an organization that began and, and had their conference, ten day conference in Brussels. You know, if you look at Karl Marx, where where he and other people like him centered Brussels. Brussels has been like the center of a lot of this stuff. So if people want to investigate the Illuminati, look into uh, who's running Brussels, what's going on in Brussels. You know, um, later you will see that some of, some of the people I was going to talk about, uh, I was going to talk about Attlee, who was the, the prime minister of, of uh United Kingdom in 1947, you know, and he helped set up NATO in 1966. Guess where where NATO got headquartered? In Brussels. Fancy that, you know. So you're real close to all of this. <laughs> I'm further away. <laughs> I'm here in, in the middle of America. You're there not that far, actually, from Brussels. Um, and, and so this Mother of Darkness castle that I exposed in 1991 uh, is there in Belgium near Muno. And uh, and then, like I've said, um, um, this isn't something new. I've said this, I don't know, with you or in other interviews that uh, I learned that they – abandoned that as the female headquarters and they've moved their rituals and, and, and so forth somewhere else because there was just too much public attention on the Chateau de Amaroy, which was the mother of darkness castle. So, you know, uh, <laughs> um, 
Now I'm getting this uh, message, my internet connection is unstable. But as long as this works, let's continue. Um, <clears throat> so, so the Demerodes, they were one of the five princely families. And if we go back in European history, you'll see that the Illuminati, they participated in the American Revolution, um, but then the Americans were wanting to get their liberty anyway, so it didn't take much pushing to, to uh, have the colonialists uh, rebel against uh, Great Britain. And, um, but you had this process that the Illuminati members would like to set themselves up as defenders of freedom. And this is important for people to understand how this all works because, uh, you know, uh, like some of the people that we're going to discuss, they may call themselves atheists or they may hide behind their, you know, I'm a Catholic. Um, they got different fronts, but atheism can be a front for Luciferianism. And, um, but when you look at what the atheist, like in our culture today, what they're promoting is basically Luciferianism. It's, it's, uh, The, and it's this concept that, you know, the creator is this cruel God, but uh, this Prometheus-like Lucifer came and he gave man all of this knowledge so that we can invent all this stuff and mankind can elevate himself. And so there's a lot of humanism in it. There's a lot of, oh, you know, the rights of man and 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 all of this, but then just like in India that I'm going to talk about, you know, where they talk about, oh, we're going to free ourselves from the British, and we're going to have democracy for India, and then you have this one Kashmiri Brahmin family, the Nehru Gandhi family, that controls India for 40 years, you know, it's like, yeah, you, like you really got away from aristocracy and royalty, you just traded one batch of rulers for another. The people don't think it through, you know. They go with the propaganda and um, what, what the, and that's, that's, so the, the controlled press, which is owned by these people, it's, it tells people what to think and people just, it, it never ceases to amaze me. I, I watch intelligent people around me and they listen to the controlled media and whatever the controlled media tells them, that's the truth. You know, they're convinced of it. They don't think it through. They, they think that the uh, controlled media has their best interest at heart and that they're going to hear the full truth from these people. These are their friends, you know? <laughs> and, and so, uh, the, um, so anyway, I had a friend, he's still a friend, amazingly, because uh, because my situation has been tenuous and I haven't been able to get around and do as much. My, my friend Damian Chapa, who was a director in Hollywood, who's been trying to expose all this stuff that we've been trying to expose, he, uh, he's, he's still my friend and, and I just haven't been able to help him and participate in the things that he wanted me to. And fortunately he has had patience with me, but he went over to Bavaria and he went to these museums where the, the Bavarian Illuminati's documents and artifacts were located. Supposedly they are, are accessible to the public, but he got so much grief and, and, and the museum curators were so difficult and tried to prevent him from seeing this stuff. Long story short, you can tell that the Illuminati 
including the branch, the Bavarian Illuminati, is alive and well. I mean, the, the kind of opposition he got to see this stuff, supposedly the Bavarian Illuminati no longer exists. So why would anyone care if you were looking at its old documents, you know? Uh, so the Bavarian Illuminati was supposedly shut down, but the Jacobin Club, which Napoleon belonged to, Napoleon was was a Freemason, a high-ranking Freemason, as well as a Jacobin. The Jacobin Club in France was the Illuminati. It, if you want to look at who the Illuminati are, go back and research who the leaders of the Jacobin Club was. And they called themselves the Friends of Freedom and Equality. You know, just like the Freemasons talk about liberty, brotherhood, equality, you know. I mean, the, these are the banner issues. They're, they're issues that if you spout these, you know, democracy for India, you know, you, you spout these banner words, and who can argue with you? Who doesn't want to be a friend of liberty and equality? You know, so that was one of the, the titles that the Jacobum Club went under. And uh, there were others. There was the Society of the Friends of Truth, which was another occult uh, group that the Illuminati created. So they don't like to just create one group. They, they create many groups. Um, and, uh, you know, the, the, the Society of the Friends of Truth, you look at Victor Hugo, Karl Marx, later on, they were all admirers of that, you know. So you can track all this and see how it all works together. And it all goes back to the Illuminati. And, you know, Van Dyne's father was uh, Cornelius Van Dyne. He was one of the leaders of the, uh, of the Illuminati and the leadership to William in 2000. We couldn't yeah. hear you now. We, I couldn't hear you. His father was... Oh, okay. If you could His father was, was uh, a leader before 2003. In 2003, the, the uh, previous generation of leaderships gave it to the next generation, and that's when William English uh Switzerland, that's when the baton was handed to William and his generation. And um, that's when David D. Marodi, uh, you know, got involved with, with assisting him as the head of Illuminati. And, of course, people were wondering, how is he going to approach things? Well, how he approached things was to try to take things back to the Bavarian Illuminati's Gnostic philosophers, you know, where, where instead of being openly Luciferian, you're like, well, we're, we're rational, we're for liberty, you know, all this stuff that you saw, all these revolutions that they created. So, uh, so if we look at, if we look, I'm looking at my watch to see how much time we have. So, Let's look at this political dynasty in India and how they created uh, the, the um, revolution there. In, in, because you're probably familiar with the Theosophical Society and HPB, uh, Helena Blavatsky. Well, one of the disciples of Helena, uh, Helena Blavatsky, HPV, was Annie Besant. And Annie Besant, who was an English lady, lived a large share of her life in India. And one of her protégés was a na man named Brooks. And this F.T. Brooks then was the personal tutor of Jawa, Harlow, so Indian names are a little bit difficult. I lived in that area of the world, so I'm, but that doesn't mean I can pronounce the names exactly all that easy. 
Jawaharlal uh, Nehru, who was the first prime minister of independent India. Anyway, when he was just a little boy, Brooks was his personal tutor, teaching him theosophical thought. Now, the, uh, both Annie Besant and HPB, they were Illuminati and they were Luciferians. So basically what you have is, is a Luciferian tutor teaching this rich Indian uh, Kashmiri Brahmin. Now, who are the Kashmiri Brahmins? Well, the, the, the Kashmiri Brahmins are the elite of the elite class, caste in, in India. They are the cream of the crop of the, the caste system. And those Kashmir to these Brahmins is considered heaven on earth. So they even, the, the, where they come from, Kashmir, is considered very sacred. And of course, you know, the sacred Ganges goes through this area and everything. So the Nehru family was very rich. And after he was privately tutored by this theosophist, he then went to Harrow. And uh, Harrow happens to be where four prime ministers of the United Kingdom went to school, uh, including Winston Churchill. So it's, it's one of these elite mucky muck schools for their elite kids, right? So he went to Harrow, and then he went to Cambridge. His daughter, Indira Gandhi, um, she went and pri was, uh, went to an a elite school in Switzerland, then went to a nice um, badminton school in England, and then went to Oxford. So this family's being educated with the elite of the British. <laughs> And uh, <coughs> Annie Besant was the second president of the Theosophical Society, Luciferian, and she was she promoted all of her life independence for India. And um, so, if where I'm going with this is, as you look at this, is an elite. Uh, Indian family that's British schooled in their elite schools and being taught by these Luciferians. And Annie Besant was the guardian of Krishnamurti. And you probably know Krish who Krishnamurti was. In the 1920s, she was trying to create a, a Lord Maitreya back then who would be the world teacher, you know, sort of like an antichrist figure except the problem was Krishnamurti didn't want to be their world teacher. He didn't want to be Lord Maitreya, so the whole thing fell apart back then. But they've been trying for years to create this world leader. You know, eventually they're going to get it right. They keep trying. Um, but that's Annie Besant. She was where, part of the implication of that, Alexandra, is these people are willing to deceive us. They They're like... They were trying to groom Krishnamurti to be something he wasn't. In other words, they were trying to deceive the world as to who he was, that he's this, like, magnificent, you know, incredible person. So we, we had our own uh, example of that kind of deception here with the Bhagwan Sri Rajneesh. He, he was an a Indian guru, a Hindu guru, that came over to United States. And when he came over to uh, California, he infiltrated his people into this big Christian church. They pretended that they were Christians. And then when they had enough people, they voted the church to themselves and kicked all the Christians out. Anyway, he went to, uh, he went to Antelope, Oregon, and tried to take that county over. And uh, he took a vow of silence so that none of the criminal activity that was done in, uh, uh, by their cult, his cult, would come back on him. So all they did when the criminal activity was exposed is they deported him. But his right-hand person, Sheila, she went, to, she went to prison for a while. Because what they tried to do is, is they were bribing 
the county officials in this county, they're um, in uh, Central Oregon. And uh, if they couldn't bribe these officials, there were some of them that they couldn't bribe. They tried to poison them and the whole thing was discovered. And, but you know, this is what we're dealing with, with these, this, this whole Hindu, you know, Annie Besant was, was very much into Hinduism, theosophy interweaves, and she was very, uh, she was in very uh, close with the Brahmin caste. And of course, as you know, the Brahmin caste are Aryans, which goes back to, you know, Hitler used the, uh, the Aryans uh, symbol of uh, the swastika, except he turned it in a black magic direction instead of a white magic direction. But uh, that doesn't mean that all the Brahmins were supportive of Hitler. I'm just saying all, all of this stuff kind of weaves together. Hitler was also a member of the Theosophical Society, as well as Mahatma Gandhi. And uh, um, Nehru was a member of the Theosophical Society. So we're, we're dealing with, um, there, there's a common thread to a lot of this stuff and, and how, so uh, Jarahal Nehru was the patriarch and his daughter Indira Gandhi became the prime minister after him. And then he's had like 40 descendants you know, her kids became prominent in politics in India. And then, and then his grandchildren. So for 40 years, this family has run India. And it just totally amazes me, like I say, that the Western press has built up these myths around this family. And then, of course, the, the press in India has built up myths about them. So you're dealing with essentially a family that's very similar to the British monarchy and the Kennedys. You know, over here, the press always is talking about the Camelot mystique of the Kennedys, which the Kennedys is another uh, Illuminati family, um, along with the British royal family. And, and, and like I was saying earlier, I think I said, in this Dutro scandal, the royal family of Belgium was intimately, there were a couple princes that were involved uh, from the royal family that were involved in the pedof sat satanic pedophilia uh, rituals and stuff, you know. Um, of course, you can't prosecute royalty in, in, you know, in Belgium, so they got off scot-free. We also had... Uh, Michael Aquino involved in that scandal, which uh, shows how the American military and military intelligence of the United America is involved with all this, this uh, pedophilia sat Satanism. And then there were two other families that I had exposed previously, the Bales and the Janssens. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing them how they would over there, but uh, they were involved. So there's a number of families. So if somebody was wanting to investigate the Illuminati, you know, I just gave you a lot of uh, uh, traction. I just gave, you, I gave the person some places where they could start to investigate because all of this stuff, you know, is, is, uh, ties in. Um, let's see what time I have. Okay. Okay. Uh, I, I've got only a few more minutes. Um, did you have anything you wanted to, to jump in and say real quickly? Uh, I'm just thinking about the country. If you say Satan, Baal, Pale, it's Belgium. You can hear it. Like, in the, isn't it so? And often uh, many uh, like names, Balfour Declaration, how this, uh, these British uh, Rothschild tried to get to Jerusalem uh, because Jerusalem, it would be the headquarter of New World Order. So it's Balfour 
declaration vowel you can hear uh, the satanic uh, yeah speaking about the rothschilds so robert rothschild uh was very prominent in belgium politics so like at the end of world war ii robert rothschild was the representative of belgium to uh communist china except belgium was not allowed to recognize communist china on the mainland because france didn't want them to but they still sent a representative and robert rothschild then went from from being a consul to Mao Zedong's government to helping set up NATO and um, so you so you know Van Dyne family is very close to the Rothschilds very close to the Catholic Church very close to Belgium royal so these are the the group of people that uh, I have been investigating and writing about and of course the things that I've talked about today for various reasons I haven't I, I am written about or talked about just on just American issues um, are you, you able to hear me still it's a uh, it's not so good sound but uh, I can hear you uh, could you tell me uh, uh, for me, like uh, William Van Down seems to be saying that his family, his ancestor, have uh, started uh, uh, the dollar, your currency. That it's not Rothschild, but it's his ancestors. Um, I don't know the particulars about that. I do know that that the family was was involved with. Uh, the Illuminati activities to try to keep uh, to create the United States, and in that sense, the whole Illuminati United States, which uh, ipso facto, then we had to have a currency because we were a country. Um, the the I guess you could say that the, if you're talking about our currency today, which are Federal Reserve notes, oh yeah, that's an Illuminati creation. Federal Reserve notes, they're not even American currency. The Federal Reserve, which is a private institution, and its stockholders are Illuminati. Yeah, from that, yeah, if you're looking at it from that angle, definitely. Well, well, I think we ran out of time. Yeah, it, the sound is quite bad now also, so, uh, but uh, I hope it, people can hear what you said anyway. Uh, I know that you you have to go now. And uh, thank you so much, Fritz. It was thank you for this opportunity to to uh, talk about these things, things that I haven't uh, written or talked about before. Thank you. Thank you. Have a great day, Fritz. <laughs> thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs>